Hello everyone, here is Aurelution. Welcome back to WebGPU Basic Tutorial. From this video, we will officially introduce the basic development skills of WebGPU. Our goal today is to understand the basic working principle of WebGPU and learn how to draw a simple graph. Due to the length of the video, we will divide it into four sections to introduce more for you. Welcome to subscribe our channel and keep being updated. Before we start, let's review a few points we learned in the last video. First of all, we learned that WebGPU is a new generation of graphics API proposed by W3C. The biggest difference between the current WebGL standard is that WebGPU has abandoned the framework of OpenGL, but has access to modern graphics APIs, which is also known as Direct3D, Mental, and Wacom. Secondly, we introduced a development environment based on Wheat and TypeScript, especially the official definition package of WebGPU in TypeScript to assist us in checking and profiling the code of WebGPU API. Finally, we learned two basic code implementations. One is to use the Navigator GPU field to detect whether the current browser environment supports WebGPU performance and also how to use a sync and a wait. To help people who are just getting started to learn WebGPU, let's briefly introduce the architecture principle of WebGPU. First of all, we need to know a principal operation of JS to native in the web. Given a web page in the browser assigned to an independent rendering process, it is a relatively independent sandbox environment. The web itself does not have the right and ability to directly use the system-level API we can only communicate with the browser through a series of JavaScript APIs, and then the browser will pass the JS command to the native module of an independent process through inter-process communication, that is IPC. Then the native module can actually call the underlying layer of the operating system and APIs of the devices, such as reading, GPS, Bluetooth, network, files, and so on. Finally, we return the results of the operation to the JavaScript process through IPC. Let's take an example here. The most common network communication we launch on the web, like HTML loading pictures and AJAX or Fetch. The process is actually like this. Browser calls the native module in the kernel responsible for the network. In the native process, operation through the underlying network API of the OIs, and finally returns the result to JS. Who are familiar with web development will know that such I.O. operations are generally asynchronous in JavaScript. This is actually one of the biggest features of web or JavaScript technology. It's because the real operation is actually performed in the native process. And JavaScript process doesn't need to wait for the operation synchronously. Then JavaScript can be free to do some other things first, and then wait for the native process to complete, and then processing the callbacks. The browser kernel has done a lot of optimization for this asynchronous operation, so we can make full use of the CPU resources between each thread, especially CPU efficiency of JavaScript in the main thread and rendering thread. Now let's look at WebGPU again. Take Chrome as an example. We said in the last video, Down is an open source project based on C++. It's an adaptional tool of Chrome's for the bottom layer and GPU. Other browsers have the similar structure. So when we call the WebGPU API in the JavaScript, the relevant commands and the parameters are actually passed to Downware by the browser. Then it is responsible for the serialization and deserialization processing related to the WebGPU. A can pass the API of WebGPU into the down native module, and then down in the native thread will really call the underlying GPU API of the operating system to do some computational and drawing work. Direct3D, Metal, and Wacom we have been talking about are actually the corresponding graphics driver APIs at the bottom of the system. We mainly use Direct3D on Windows. LS Mac may be used in Metal. For other operating systems like Linux and Android, we generally use Wacom by default. So there is a standard setting for WebGPU to apply these three APIs. It's not that the WebGPU uses three at the same time, but the browser will automatically choose to use different API drivers to operate the GPU according to various operating systems and environments. And we should know that most of the WebGPU APIs are asynchronous operations. 
For some special scene of rendering and drawing, there are some clones or APIs that need to return results. For example, requesting a GPU instance or figuring some operations on the GPU. But some are unnecessary, such as high-performance rendering applications. We may perform tens of thousands of drawing operations in one frame. We don't need these operations to return a re result to JavaScript. We can output those content directly on the screen, so JavaScript doesn't need to get an operation result at every step. Therefore, the WebGPU refers more to the API packaging design of Metal in the customization process and takes the method of a commander encoder, which we will learn this uh, in the code later. It allows users to store and the compiled APIs of drawing and calculation in the JavaScript code. We can store tens of thousands of operations in advance. In this way, we can omit the communication overhead from JavaScript to down, which can greatly improve the efficiency of JavaScript to achieve the most CPU and GPU performance. Then let's take a look at the specific usage process of WebGPU. Simply put, a complete usage process is roughly divided into three steps. Initializing the device instance, configuring the GPU pipeline, and commanding to store them as we just mentioned. The initialization is easy to understand. In the last video, we also demonstrated a simple operation. The main purpose is to obtain the logical use of a GPU that can be operated in JavaScript. Because GPU itself is a native API, we need to request a logical proxy that is operable in JavaScript from the browser. We'll go into more detail in the code later. Then in addition to getting the GPU instance for the web development, we may still need to configure the canvas. A canvas instance can be used to display GPU content. Then after getting the GPU instance, we can actually start operating the GPU. The most important thing here is to configure the pipeline of the GPU. What is the pipeline of GPU? So simply put, uh, the working pipeline of GPU is actually the same as CPU, no matter if it is computing or drawing graphics. GPU also needs to run related code and programs. We generally call GPU code shader. It is the same as all CPU programs like C, Java, Python, or JavaScript. Lastly, we also need some code logic. Call it, declare some variables, define the input and output, and so on. So configuring a so-called GPU pipeline is actually telling the GPU which shader programs we want to run, what input variables, what data needs to be used, and extra. We'll introduce it step by step in the following video. Then after completing the configuration, we can start real calculation and drawing work. We just introduced that WebGPU adopts a working mechanism called Commander Encoder. That allows us to store some operation in JavaScript, such as which shader to use to, for resource allocation, what graphics to draw, and so on. Then after the drawing is completed, we will submit the command queue, and our browser will follow the order of the queue internally, which is what we just said about performing related operations in a separate native process. For the JavaScript process, this is an asynchronous uh, submission, and we don't need to wait for the result. Okay, this is the uh, basic web GPU workflow. Now, let's deepen our understanding through code practice. We put the demo basic triangle in our Evolution Git repo. Please feel free to download and play. Let's look into the running effect of the demo today. We got a run triangle in the window. Compared to the workflow of WebGPU, let's look into the code structure. We define three methods in the WebGPU in the pipeline and draw. The corresponding ones are to initialize WebGPU, configure a basic pipeline, and then create a drawing command queue. Finally, we run to call those functions in turn, and finally, we can draw the graph. So what exactly those methods do? In our next video, we'll clear the code and then walk you through all the process. And we will learn the specific usage of each API. All right, I'll see you in the next video.